Hello, my name is Dan Nissen, and today we'll be learning how to use bump and normal maps inside of Redshift for Cinema 4D. I will also be covering blending these maps and utilizing Redshift's procedural noises as well. I won't be covering how the scene was set up, but if you need help setting up your Redshift lights, cameras, and basic materials, visit some of the other videos on the Redshift channel to help guide you. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so I've set up a basic scene today which I'll be using to demonstrate some bump mapping effects. Our goal is to get a metal material that has some surface imperfections, scratches, and overall looks damaged. So let's go ahead and create a new material. And let's apply this to our geometry. Now, we really won't be using the viewport today as we won't be adjusting the lighting setup or the camera angle. So let's go ahead and open up our shader graph and our render view. As you can see, we have our basic material applied, our default material applied. And we're going to change some of the base properties to get a more metallic look. So let's start by lowering the diffuse down to almost pure black. Let's raise the roughness to about 0.35 to blur up some of the reflections. Let's change the BRDF to GGX. And let's raise the IOR to 5. As you can see, this is going to be the base for our metal material. Now let's take a look at the nodes we'll be using today. So under Utilities and Bump, we have the Bump Blender and the Bump Map. For right now, we're just going to need the Bump Map, but we, we will revisit the Blender later. We're also going to need a Texture Node and a Triplanar Node, which I'll explain what this is for in a second. So in our Texture Node, let's go ahead and load up our Bump Map. And override the gamma to 1. And let's connect this to our triplanner under texture image X. Now the reason we're using a triplanner today is this geometry doesn't have proper UVs. So basically what the triplanner is going to allow us to do is wrap this texture around our object without any weird tiling issues. And I won't be going over I won't be going into detail about these settings today as I won't have time, but I've prepared some settings so we don't have to waste any time um, messing with them. We're going to change this to 0.2, raise this up to about almost 5.2, and change the scale to 0.1. Now let's connect this to our bump map. So under texture and then input. And now we're going to connect this bump map node to our redshift material under overall and then bump input. As you can see, we're now getting some bump effects. Obviously, this is way too strong for what we're going to be going for today. So we're going to adjust the height scale, which basically the way the height scale works is the higher the number goes, the stronger the effect is going to be coming through. So we're going to lower this quite a bit. About 0.03. Let's go even lower to about 0.01. Yeah, so we just want some subtle damage, some wear and tear a few dinks in the material, nothing too extreme. And the way this height scale works as well is, and I'll do a quick region render to show you this, is negative values will actually invert the effect. So we'll take a look at this. And yeah, as you can see, the effect is now being inverted, which we don't want this for um, this material. So we're going to go back to positive 0.01. That can be helpful. And we're also, we're going to go back to the texture node and go to the advanced tab and lower the MIT bias. And once again, I won't be explaining what these settings are as I won't have time, but basically what this MIT bias is doing is the lower the effect or the lower the number is going, the higher resolution of our texture is going to be used in Redshift. So basically we're going to be getting more detail out of our map. So I'll go back to the default of zero just to show you this effect one more time. And go back to negative eight. And yeah, we're just getting so much more detail out of the map now. And it's looking really good. And we'll do a quick bucket render to show the entire material. And that's basically how you set up bump mapping inside of Redshift. Um, next, we're going to be looking at using normal maps, which is practically the exact same setup, minus a few different settings. And yeah, that's already looking really nice. So let's go ahead and go back to IPR mode. Let's take this setup one and put it up here. We're going to go ahead and disconnect this. And let's bring in some more nodes for our second setup. So we're going to need a texture node. 
a triplanar node and a another bump node. Now let's go ahead and load up our our normal map we'll be using. Override the gamma to one again. Go to the advanced tab. Lower the mid bias again. Go ahead and plug this into the triplanar under texture image X. And once again, I already have these settings um, predetermined. So 0.4, and we'll take the scale up to 0.1. Now we're going to plug this triplanar into the bump map under texture input. Now you might have noticed that there is an actual normal map node inside of Redshift. Now this node has been deprecated. It is strictly still in Redshift just for older scenes to work, but there's been a new method inputted recently. So this is not to be used once again. So we're going to delete this. And we're going to go to the bump map node and we're going to change the input map type. So basically right now it's reading for height field, which is grayscale maps. We want to change it to tangent space normal, which is going to be our normal maps. And once again, this is just telling Redshift that, um, hey, we're using normal maps. So we're going to go ahead and plug this into our bump input. And as you can see, we're now getting scratch effects all over our material. And once again, the height scale works the exact same as before. We're going to go ahead and lower this as the effect is a little bit too strong right now. It almost looks like claw marks. So yeah, 0.3 is going to be good, and we'll do a quick bucket render. And that's how you set up normal maps inside of Redshift. Um, like I said, it's the almost the exact same setup, um, minus a few different settings. And yeah, it's, it's coming through really nice. We're getting nice scratches everywhere. Now next what I'm going to show you is how do we blend these two maps together. Or say you want to blend multiple um, setups together of bump maps and normal maps. Well, it's pretty easy and straightforward, and I'll show that to you right now. Let's go ahead and disconnect this setup. Let's rearrange our nodes. So we're going to go back to the bump blender I talked about earlier. And we're going to connect this to our bump input of our redshift material. Now we're going to take our setup one and we're going to plug this into our base and then base input. And now we're getting that original bump effect coming through exactly like we had before. Except now what we're going to do is we're going to take our second setup, which included the normal map, and we're going to plug this into layer 0, bump input 0. And sorry, I'm going to rearrange my nodes. I'm not used to working on one screen, I apologize. Yeah. Okay, so we I'll do this one more time. So we're going to take the second setup for the normal map and plug this into bump input 0. As you can see, nothing is happening. Well, we need to go into the bump blender and we need to raise the blend weight of layer zero. So we're going to raise this to one. And basically what this is doing is it's taking 100% of our layer zero and using that for the bump. And we're taking 0% of our original base input. So we can take this blend weight down to 50%, basically 0.5. And basically what this is doing is it's taking 50% of the base input and 50% of our layer zero input and mixing them together. Now say we want both effects coming in at 100% on top of each other. So we're going to take this blend weight back to 1 and we're going to switch this to additive mode. Now th what this is doing is we have bump both effects coming in at 100% on top of each other. And even in this additive mode we can still um, lower this blend weight. So say the scratches are coming in a little bit too heavy we can lower this to about 0.65. As you can see, we're just not getting as many scratches coming through. And they're not as um, dominant as they were before. And that's basically how you use the um, Bump Blender node inside of Redshift. So I've showed you how to set up bump maps, normal maps, and now how to blend them. And this Bump Blender, the way it works is it includes a base and three other layers. So effectively, you're mixing in four different setups. Now say you have more bump maps or more normal maps you want to mix into this. What you can do is you take another bump blender and they actually nest inside of each other. So what that means is I'll take our original bump blender and plug it into this one I just created in the base input. And what I'll do is I'll just copy this setup real quick just to show you. And what we can do is, so say you have more layers of bump you want in um, your material, is we can plug this another setup into 
layer zero, bump in input zero. And basically it's working the exact same as it did before. And we're just adding on another layer, which you're not gonna be seeing the effect here as we've already using this bump map, but you see what I mean. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this and plug this back in. And we'll do a quick bucket render so we can see both effects coming through. And that is basically how you set up bump maps and normal maps inside of Redshift and how to blend them. Next, I'm going to be showing you how you can use procedural Redshift noises to um, enhance your setups and mix them into your bump maps. So basically what I've done is taken a snapshot of our recent bucket render. So we can compare this to our next couple renders. So I'm going to get out of snapshots and turn the IPR back on. Now what we're going to need is a noise node and we're going to connect this to the output so we can directly see what's going on inside this map. Now this map doesn't have any correct values we're just going to be artistically tweaking this so we're going to raise the overall scale and what we want this map to look like is a black and white map that we can mask off um, our scratch layers which I'll show you what I mean in a second so we're just gonna raise the complexity a bit lower the amplitude gain let's add a bit of distortion and now we're going to add some contrast to this map so we're gonna raise this min raise this bias and there this should be good and basically what this map is going to be doing is in the white areas, the scratches are going to be showing up more. And in the black areas, the scratches are going to be showing up less. So I'll show, uh, I'll show you what I mean in a second. So we're going to connect our material back to our output. And now we're going to connect this noise we just created to the layer 0, bump weight 0. And we'll do a quick bucket render. And we'll compare this to our previous render to show um, what this is actually doing. Alright, now let's take a snapshot so we can compare them. And as you can see, we're just getting much less scratches coming through. Um, which I'm actually liking this a lot better than before. The previous render where, where we were just not masking off any of the scratches, it's kind of just like a uniform... Um, scratches all over the material which can be not a desired effect um, depending on what you're going for with our second render we're masking them off in a lot of the main areas but we're still getting scratches as you can see here as i'm pointing with my mouse we're still getting scratches just not as much as before and once again we can adjust this noise we just created to have the scratches come in more but it's all depending on what you're going for but yeah we're just not getting as much dominant scratches as before which i'm really liking this so now I'm going to show you one more thing before I end this tutorial. So we're going to go back to IPR. And we're actually going to bring in another noise. And we're going to need a bump map. Now I'm going to show you how you can use actual redshift noises inside your bump blender. Um, as an actual bump map. So we're going to connect this RS noise to the bump map under texture input. And we're going to load this redshift bump map into layer 1 and bump input 1. And once again, we're going to go into the bump blender and we're going to have to adjust the blend weight to one. And I'm actually, I'm going to turn off additive mode so I can just see what's happening on our top layer. So we can just see what's going on in this bump layer. So we're going to adjust this redshift noise. Once again, there are no correct settings. We're just going to be artistically tweaking this. We're going to raise this overall scale. And we're going to add a bit of complexity to it. Now let's, of course, let's adjust the height scale which we've went over earlier and we're gonna lower it quite a bit so about 0.025 now let's go a little bit higher I'll do 0.035 there we go and we're just gonna get some slight rippling effects in our um, highlights and just o overall in our material just to give it another layer of detail so we're gonna go back to the bump blender and turn on additive mode once again and we're gonna do a quick bucket render and we'll compare this to our previous render to see how this is affecting our material. Oh yeah, and this is already looking um, really good. Adding just another layer of detail. And let's compare this to our previous render. And yeah, you know, it's just adding um, more variation to our surface. Um, 
it's breaking up the the highlights before it looks a little bit too uniformed this is just adding a little bit more roughness to it. it looks like the material has been or this object's been used a lot it's been rubbed up versus other metals it's just looking a lot better in my opinion and yeah that's um how you can use noise inside your um, bump setups and how you can mask off bump effects So this concludes using bump and normal maps inside of Redshift. This project will be available for download in the description if you ever need to reference it. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was easy for you to follow. Make sure to subscribe as Redshift is rapidly adding new features so lots more tutorials to come.